Some of you think that your homes don't look that great because you don't have money. No, it's because you buy nonsense. Nonsense doesn't have to be cheap. Uh -huh. Hi you guys and welcome to the channel. I hope your day is going well. Today we are going to be talking about something very interesting that I actually like to talk about. And I hope that I don't annoy some people. I will definitely call some people out unknowingly but i hope that you pick something positive from this video and use it to your advantage okay i hope you guys are not hearing my creaking chair number one and i hope you're fine with me holding my mic i don't have a problem with it i'm just trying it today because i noticed that it's falling off my blouse a lot of times i get comments like oh can you I like the way you are intentional about your space. This is just an instance, but I remember posting a video on TikTok um, when I just started my TikTok account, and it was me, I think, showing people work table essentials. And I remember someone leaving a comment and saying, Oh my God, what exactly do you do for a living? And that comment was so weird. It sounded like I had spent such a huge amount of money to buy work table essentials. I don't know what it was. Was it the MacBook or I don't know because I just had a phone stand, a table, bean, what else? Literally a bottle stand and the person was saying, oh, what do you do for a living? And someone commented under that. Someone replied under that comment. I guess the person follows me. And the person was like, it's not about what she does for a living. Sometimes a lot of us feel like we need to have a certain amount of money to 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 achieve certain kind of things and it's such a limiting mindset and what's crazy is that it would rip you of so much time and so much pleasure that you should be getting while you are waiting to attain a certain status if that makes sense so we're going to be talking about some reasons why your home looks cheap not because you don't have money it's not because you have limited funds some of you think that your homes don't look that great because you don't have money no, it's because you buy nonsense. It's because you buy rubbish. <laughs> and you spend money buying those rubbish things. And the truth is that nonsense doesn't have to be cheap. In the same vein, good stuff doesn't have to be expensive. So I need us to get that down first. It's not based on how much you have or how much money you make. It's really placement, quality, um, textures, styling, measurements, how things work with other things around the house and i'm not talking from a professional perspective i'm just talking from the perspective of someone who knows good things when i see them i mean someone who has tried to put things together with the little that she has it's really not about cost like i said a lot of times it's just that some elements in your home are not cohesive enough and so they end up not looking well put together the truth is that there are some items that you might have in your house that look cheap or that may make your home look cheap and in another setting might just look perfect my fitting nicely and will just give another home a different kind of look. It might even just be that key thing that another house needs, but will not work well for your own house. So first things first, I would say one of the things that makes a lot of people's homes look cheap is when there is no color themes. I love neutral colors, but I'm going to say this and I don't think I've mentioned this ever because it's something that just recently started. But I would say that one thing I've noticed about myself now, which is why you should never say never, because as time goes on, things change and some things might just be a little different from what they were. I personally have realized that I love a pop of color. Um, I do like neutral, um, muted colors, but I do not mind if there's a pop of color. And when I say pop, I don't even mean like just few tones above muted colors I, i'm on the hunt for a center rock and let me tell you none of the muted colors are, are are speaking to me i would have naturally thought that i would gravitate towards neutral colors like grays and like beige and taupe and those kind of creamy brownish neutral tone colors but for some reason i have been loving the bright colored center rugs. It's really not about doing the whole Instagram, YouTube, muted, nude, 
uh, vlogger theme. It's not about that. Most times there's no color theme. Um, you're just throwing things in. You're throwing um, furniture in without thinking twice. Some people would have their dining tables in maybe wood and then they would buy a glass center table. Sometimes it can work. It really depends on how you see. It depends on how much you know about styling because trust me, some people can pull it off. But a lot of times there needs to be a like a coordinating theme, something that pulls them together. Sometimes it's just one piece of item or just one piece of furniture that kind of brings everything together. So you need to know to actually know. So people use an abundance of styles. Like, are you going vintage? Are you doing modern? Are you doing Victorian? Are you doing colors? And you don't even know what you're doing. And that can mess with the way your house looks. It's all over the place. It's not calming. It's not cohesive. It's just... Uh, it's just weird. One thing I would always advise is if you are confused on what to get or what to do, is settle for neutral colors. Because the thing about neutral colors is that because of how toned down and how muted they are on the eye, you can hardly go wrong with them. Okay, you can be in a room with browns and creams and grays and whites and it doesn't look that bad because the colors are not overbearing. The colors are not too much. So most times if you are uncertain about what to pick, settle for a neutral color in my opinion. That's what I would advise. Second thing that I want to mention that I think a lot of Nigerians do is that you guys use a lot of cheap mass produced items. And it's not even about affordability because it's crazy that you will hear the amount of money people pay for these things. Let's take for instance, people who have bedrooms where they use Versace bed sheets. We know it's not an original. People who have Chanel bed sheets, people who have Fendi bed sheets. And the colors are always so weird. And apart from them being weird, they look cheap. You don't even need to touch the fabric to know that that bed sheet feels cheap. And a lot of these bed sheets, I'm using bed sheets because I know people do this a lot. And I know a lot of people that do this a lot of these bedsheets are not even absorbent you're sleeping on a bed and you are sweating but the sweat is not even getting absorbed you will be swimming in your sweat because the fabric doesn't even absorb so when you use weird cheap mass-produced items like this how do you expect your house to look if you enter mr a's house you are seeing lv you enter mr b house you are seeing lv same with throw pillows some people buy these throw pillows that are so weird you you have chanel you have lv you have the and what's crazy is that the amount of money you're buying these things for, you can get them in other designs. But nobody, they're not looking at the plain designs. Those ones look good. They look sharp. It's, it's doing them ocean proper for their eyes. So a lot of times, instead of buying those cheap bed sheets, cheap throw pillows, cheap rugs with all of those weird designs maybe look into thrift so not everybody is down to buy thrift but i'm guessing if you want something if this is a look that you want that you will not settle it's either going to be one of two things it's either you settle for a thrifted one or you go all the way and spend the money and buy brand new ones the quality i always look for i either have to settle for thrift or i have to splurge and buy the brand new if you live in lagos nigeria there are a couple of warehouses scattered all around lagos where you can buy thrifted items i'm going to take you guys to one next week i think i'm planning to go to one next week so i would do a vlog and maybe i would do a short form contents for tiktok and instagram now these warehouses bring in things from the us uk canada wherever they bring stuff in and they just dump them it is a massive heaven for thrift lovers like me that want quality stuff there's nothing you will not find there you will find body products you will find furniture you would find appliances electrical appliances you would find a lot of quality known branded items so check those out they have a couple of them in Oshodi. Um, you just need to know where to find one I don't even know a lot of them. I think maybe I know just two in the whole of Lagos and that's because I don't go out a lot. But don't sleep on these places. If you find them, walk in there and check for your home stuff. You get quality plates, you cookware, you get quality dishes, quality glassware as well from these places. So please check them out, okay? They are better than the china mass produced items that you will buy that are made with lower quality materials another thing is one of the things i like to talk about a lot and that is clutter because your house can never look good when you have clutter some people leave as if there are things that they want to use in the afterlife no need holding on to stuff that you're not using especially when you 
you know within yourself that you haven't used this thing in the last couple of months. You haven't used it in the last year. As long as I am alive, I can repurchase. If I discard something, I have most likely thought about it deeply and I know that I'm not using it. I haven't used it in a long while. But the truth is that if eventually the need arises, I would find a way to repurchase or I'll just find a way. You will always find a way. There are some things that you think you need, but when you don't have them, you realize that you actually didn't need it that much. When we moved from our old place down here, our microwave glass got broken. There was no way I was going to use it without a glass. Um, so I discarded it. And I just kept on saying, you know, I'll buy a microwave. And we haven't just bought a microwave. Actually, the reason why I haven't gotten a microwave is because I haven't figured out where to put one in my kitchen. I don't have the space for it. And I'm not somebody who would buy something without figuring out where I want to put it. I need to have a designated spot for it. Really, I have done without a microwave for, what, five, six years Nothing happened. I use my oven when necessary. I bring out my food in time, let it thaw, warm it. So it's just something that is not necessary. And even when I could afford to buy it, I just realized that I actually did not need it. I could very well do without it. So something else that is also very important if, if you want your space to look good is to plan your space before you make a purchase. This is so important. This is something that I do on a regular. And that's the reason why people have 3D designs. Right? It's so that you can plan before you get to work. That's the same thing that you should do when it comes to your home, whether you are buying decor, whether you're buying furniture. If you cannot draft out what the plan would look like, you can just sit down. For me, what I usually do is if I want to buy something or I feel like, okay, this part of my living room is missing something, I just sit down and I look around and I just try to imagine that thing in my space. Right now that I'm trying to buy a rock, I can't tell you guys how many times I would sit down in my living room when there's nobody and I'm just thinking of the colors that I've been seeing and I'm just trying to work around what color will fit my living room shares what type of color would just tie everything together the same thing i do with shoes i don't buy shoes until i have space for shoes so that means i either don't have space or i'm giving out an old pair to make space for a new one so that way you're able to avoid having clutter in your house it is very necessary it also builds discipline for you in so many other areas of your life apart from in your home there might be apps that you might be able to just play with colors and all of that those can help you when it comes to you know being creative with what you want your space to look like Something else that a lot of you do and you wonder why your space looks the way it looks is using weird colored paints, weird wallpaper, weird frames. Um, way back in the day, we used to have frames that our parents used in their homes that had this gold design. I'll leave it on the screen. They had like this gold vintage design. Some people still use them in their homes still today. So if you have frames like that, first things first, change the frame be intentional about the kind of wallpapers that you put in your house because it can either make or break what your interior design is looking like so always stick with modern themes if that's what you're going for another thing i think a lot of people do that i would like to mention is using very generic things around the house now for someone like me Everything I put in my house were a lot of things, and I'm going to tell you why I said that. A lot of things I put in my house are well thought out. Before I buy a frame, even if the frame comes, because I mean, now you can make frames, you can choose what you want written in them, but there are some frames that come already made. So you buy them, it already has life is beautiful, it already has live, love, laugh, it already has this. I make sure that these things speak to me. I make sure there are things that um, are personal to me before I actually purchase them. I remember there's a thrift page I follow and I, I've come across a couple of frames that she sells. Um, she had this nice New York frame and I was so tempted to buy it because the price was good, the frame was beautiful. But the one reason why I did not buy it, and this is just a personal thing, is because I couldn't find anything that connected me to that frame in the sense that I definitely want to visit New York, but I haven't been there before. There was just something of, you know, great memory for me in New York, then I would have definitely purchased that frame because when I look at it, it means something to me. So it's not just, oh, just buying it just for the sake of buying it. When you're picking out things in your home, whether it's frames, whether it's just regular random decor pieces, um, or, you know, figurines, things like that, most times let it be something that speaks to you. 
um, let it be something that is personal to you. That way you make your home unique and it feels original. You feel like it belongs to you when you step in. It doesn't just look like it's a museum and you just pick out random items. When you're living in your home, it feels very personal. It feels like you. It feels like it belongs to you. Why I said... Um, I have picked something that really didn't speak to me. It's because of a particular frame I have. I bought it because of the price and I needed to fill that wall space. But it's the one thing that I would say it's not very personal to me. But yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Let me know things that you want to change in your home. And if you want to share other things with us on how you can make your home not look cheap, let us know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Thank you.